40 to 50 billion right now on high speed rail 2 for in some sections of the track 140 miles an hour. When I was growing up, Intercity 125 was the big thing, and that's 125 miles an hour, so it's about 15 miles an hour improvement. That's rubbish. Um, I, I think, you know, the, the, the Eurostar is 186 miles an hour. To give this some perspective, the, 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 the Japanese and the Chinese are the sort of Shinkansen bullet train and, and high speed rail kings of the world, if you like, and that's something around 300 miles an hour. Supersonic trains, over 750 miles an hour. So we're talking about the same dynamics of the teams cracking the conundrum for flight, cracking it for, um, for overland as well. So think how, how radically this would change everyone's journey forever if you solve these, the, what's on this page right here. Pretty big. Um, what does the team have to do? Well, obviously solve an enormous amount of tech, tech challenges, uh, way more than what Concord was, was in the first place. Uh, we have to fuse several new technologies together for the first time in one package. Concord had several firsts, first fiber wire, first angular brain system, first, you know, several firsts in one package. It has to be safe and sustainable. Uh, we have to break new, bar new boundaries and push new limits and, and have to create new partnerships. A lot of people don't even know what the word Concord means. It, it means the unity and agreement through partnership. That's why it was named Concord. Um, so we have to unite around a common cause. I think, you know, getting the European Union together again to maintain the sort of tech leadership uh, over America, over China, over India, over Brazil. You know, we've obviously, we, you know, we can have common partners around the world, but I think this project is really to galvanize the, the tech capabilities of Europe. You know, Germany and its car sector, England and its Formula One teams and all that sort of stuff, but it's fusing this kind of stuff together. Um, and team, what, what they have to do, they have to be incentivized for essentially what is going to be their ultimate life challenges as designers and engineers and technicians create a legacy for the way humanity moves and travels. So again, that's a pretty big statement in, in, one, in one sentence. Uh, how will we know what they have succeeded and how will we judge? Uh, just like the Olympics, obviously, you know, we can measure the time of the journey, uh, but the World Bank Speed Record. We can measure emissions, noise, passenger enjoyment, affordability, and safety. Then we know we hit all these parameters, we've got a pretty successful uh, journey. Barriers to success, Mother Nature, and you can fly something through supersonic, it creates this all, almighty boom. And that, that's that's the big thing to solve. So physics, economics, willpower, you know, being being lazy over and we did it before, sort of thing. Um, that's not the case now, so we need to sort of you know re-energize and re-push limits. Uh, public perceptions, I think there's a lot of public perception around flight and uh, you know some of the other challenges here that with the things like health and education, things like that, you know. I see this as very important as well because you know we've got seven billion people around the world, and they all are getting increasingly affluent, getting out of poverty, things like that. They all want to go and see you know Great Barrier Reef in Australia or the the, the Congo or, or you know the Amazon or Track Machu Picchu, whatever it is. And, and we need to do business around the world with one another. So this is you know we we uh, there's a bit of a sort of negativity around um, flight and, and you know its its contribution to global carbon emissions. It is actually only two percent uh, for those that are not aware of that. Uh, also, just finding the right partnerships, going back to the previous slide, Concord being partnerships. So we have to find the right sort of partners to gel together, kind of like you know, rock band making great music. It just has to sort of be the right sort of team. Um, who might participate? I see this as a hybrid between industry, governments, universities, high net worth individuals. Before it was taxpayer funded from the British and the uh, French governments thinking that taxpayers should fund this. Uh, originally, 300 Concords were going to be sold to the world. We didn't sell any because of the oil crisis. Um, so these sort of people have to be incentivized here in Unison that they're going to invest in something in R&D and they're going to make that back. Uh, you know, I come from the city background, so you know, obviously, you know, you have to make something. If you're going to manufacture something, you have to make it economically and sell it to the world. Um, what amount should the prize purse be? Well, this is a, a, an interesting one with a potential 80 billion on the table here from our European Union uh, cousins. Um, we think sort of initially 100 million pounds would be for the initial research, but let's say a thousand people for five years to study all aspects of this. Um, Stack two is a reference to Stack one, which is Supersonic Transport and Aviation Committee in 1956. It studied 400 different aspects of supersonic flight, like for example radiation of the sun, because it flies at 60,000 feet, not 40,000 feet. So it's a study all aspects of that. So it's almost you know, it's renewing that package of documents, if you like, and, and anything else we know now. Um, we think a billion pounds could be the ultimate prize fund to give you some perspective of that. The European consortium of four countries with Airbus uh, built the A380 Super Jumbo 
in about 10 years and about 10 million euros and now export that to the world. And guess what? The 747 is in decline because the entry rate is a better product. Um, so the massive ROI potential to transport world aviation passengers is, 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 a, is a huge incentive. Uh, why should this prize in the be a top priority? Um, forever banish subsonic travel if you solve the noise emissions, affordability and safety issues. Uh, more time to see the world. You know, if, you have, if, if this challenge gets solved, great. You know, we'll be uh, spending longer time in our destination to do business meetings or to sit around the pool or to go and see UNESCO World Heritage Sites or whatever it is that float your boat uh, on world travel. Um, and it's one of these things that, you know, we start the crazy idea now, I'm kicking it off today because it's kind of an audacious statement to, to sort of stand up here and, and say all this stuff. But it's one of these things that if we look back, let's say, 20 or 30 years time, we can't believe we ever travelled subsonic. I want to banish subsonic forever because we just solved all these problems at one time. That's it.